Dan, it's great to speak with you again in Tuscaloosa. Drew DeArmond sitting in for Ryan Fowler. How are you this afternoon, sir? Well, good, Drew. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. It's very kind of you. And, uh, you know, I guess one thing about uh, having all that knowledge, Ben, it means you've been around a long time. So uh, <laughs> That's right. You know, and, and uh, but uh, I've always enjoyed the evaluation and, and personnel and uh, things like that. So, uh, you know, everybody's got their own uh, thing they love to do, and, and that was always mine, uh, scouting and coaching and uh, the evaluation part of so coaching and, and pro football and stuff. So, But anyway, um, uh, what's happening in Tuscaloosa? Well, you know, it's, it's always uh, Alabama football is the biggest topic of conversation. Everybody uh, is still recovering from the loss against Clemson and uh, Alabama, you know, rebooting their coaching staff for the second straight year with a lot of changes. Seven new assistant coaches, Dan, as you know, and Tua Tungo by will be coming back as the starter. Jalen Hurts moving on to Oklahoma. And that's Oklahoma is a, a good place to start. I wanted to uh, pick your brain a little bit. Uh, Kyler Murray releases today, and I think everyone was expecting this because football, I think, had always been his first love. His last game was against the University of Alabama on the college level uh, in the Orange Bowl, but now he is going to uh, tr- concentrate on uh, football full-time, going to pay back the majority of that signing bonus after being the ninth overall pick of the Oakland A's. What are your thoughts on Kyler Murray and projecting to the National Football League? Well, I tell you, it's scary to me if I was a general manager because um, I, I tried to – I called the Oakland A's since that's the that drafted him to get some verified information, and they didn't give me any because, you know, frankly uh, – I've been around a lot of baseball scout stuff, and I don't know if they ever measure these guys. They, they eyeball <laughs> them all the time. You know, right. I mean, it's 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 unbelievable. I mean, hey, you'll see a hundred of them at a high school baseball game for radar guns and everything. But you know, and, and you know, I, my son was a heck of a baseball player, and he was in a lot of showcases and all that stuff. And you know, so I got to see you know firsthand some of these. I had to correct some of the scouts there. Says, man, that ain't the way you time a guy. You know what I mean? Or you got to put down the right. Um, uh, the the uh, you know conditions like I know one time my son was running the sixty out in in the grass that was about you know two feet high I think you know and I said well you got to put those conditions down you don't put like you run on astroturf you know that stuff and I don't know some of those guys I saw hey this is no kid I saw one baseball scout one time time a guy running the first base or it was a group of guys at a showcase from behind home plate. Uh, you figure that out, you know what I mean? So I, I don't uh, – I a lot of those baseball scouts, you can have them. They're not as detailed as uh, football scouts. But anyway, um, Oakland wouldn't give me anything, and I called uh, Perfect Game, who's really a pretty good baseball organization uh, for high school and college and things. It's a national organization. They're, you know, they're everywhere. I mean, they got a great big complex even in Georgia now and Florida, and, and they're based out of uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, up here where I'm at. But – but anyway, I called them, and, and I know one of their directors, and I said, hey, how big is Ky- Kyler Murray, you know? And, and he said that he was at a baseball, uh, he was at, um, you know, practice and talked to Murray uh, last baseball season, and he said that Murray's probably 5'9", but he's no taller than 5'10". He said he's around, you know, more likely 5'10", or something, not 5'9". And then he said he thought he was around 175 pounds. He said he's a very slender guy. He said uh, he's small. And, uh, you know, so if, if he truly is, say, 5'9", 175, 180, um, physics are going to beat him up, you know. And, um, and if you remember in that uh, uh, Oklahoma-Alabama game, um, mm-hmm. I think it was Christian Miller or somebody grabbed him, or maybe it was uh, – Wow, gosh. I'm I think it was somebody. Miller. Miller got him early, Dan, in the game. I know he sacked him early. Yeah, well, they also – And Anthony Jennings, him. too, I think. That was it. Jennings Jennings grabbed him and just threw him down like a sack of hammers, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, so he – I mean, I'm telling you, in the NFL, people talk about Mayfield and, and Russell, you know, Russell Wilson. Hey, those guys are built like running backs. You know, they're not uh, really a slender built guy or anything like that. They're tough to bring down. They can spin out of things. And that's not saying Murray can't, but that's a long answer to your question. I think I, if I was a general manager, I would pass on him. I wouldn't even have to put him on my sideboard and let somebody else have him, especially if I had a quarterback. You know, I mean, I 
I just um, I think you're gambling too much with uh, the NFL. I mean, you've seen NFL games. Well, you, even if you Alabama is, is very close to the NFL, and you see all those players. Well, can you imagine uh, Williams? You know, Quinn Williams hitting him, and I mean, it's all over. It might be one play; the guy's career is over. So. Um, I'll, I'll wait till a second contract and sign Murray if I'm interested. You know, I just, uh, you know, will he go in the first round? Uh, I don't know. You know, there's 32 teams out there that think they have the answers, and uh, we know that most of them don't. So one of those teams that needs a quarterback uh, may take him. He's only played one year. You know, that's the other thing about uh, Russell Wilson. He played four years in college, and mm-hmm. uh, so did um, Mayfield. They both, and this is a guy played one year. Okay, so I just, uh, like I said, I, I, um, I'll leave reservations. Uh, you know, let somebody else take him, and if he's that good and he's not all beat up and uh, playing baseball time, I want him in second contract. I'll look at him. Well, and Dan, uh, the it's interesting how the quarterback evaluations have kind of changed. Uh, Ten years ago, the measurables were six four, six five, two thirty, and now. Uh, they don't seem uh, they they don't seem to be putting as much emphasis on height though as you said Murray is five nine I I think you know you look at Drew Brees he's five eleven uh, you look at Russell Wilson he's five he's a little bit taller nearly six feet tall just a little under uh, it's, it's but it's interesting how the metrics a little bit have changed about what they're looking for yeah I think now with all the uh, all over the country how they have the seven on seven camps and all that that. The big thing is, and, and I've said this though from the day I started scouting, you know, thirty some years ago. One, you got to be accurate. Hey, when you fall out of bed in the morning, that quarterback uh, could probably, you know, pick up a um, a piece of paper, you know, and throw it right through a keyhole, you know. <laughs> uh, and you've got to be accurate. And when you get out of bed in the morning, and you know, you can work on it and things like that to some extent. But, man, accuracy, you're born with it. And, uh, and then the other thing is decision-making. You've got to make great decisions. I mean, you, those two things, you've got, you know, numerous critical factors that, you, you know, guys got to gotta, um, do. But the two things, though, you've got to be accurate. You've got to make great decisions. And if you can do that, you've got a chance. Well, <laughs> Dan, speaking about accurate, Tua Tungvaloa, uh, you know, almost winning the Heisman in his first year as a starter. Of course, what he did at the end of his freshman year to help win the national championship in 2017. I had an interesting conversation uh, at the Super Bowl with Joe Theismann. Uh, and, of course, he was also on these airwaves uh, on Tide 102.9. And I was su- pretty surprised that he, he felt like, uh, it, much like you, he agreed with you on your evaluation of Kyler Murray and his height. But he also felt like, that Tua Tungvaloa was going to have a rough transition to the National Football League. Tua is, uh, you know, over six feet tall. He is, you know, built, you know, sturdier than a Kyler Murray. I know he had a few nagging injuries this year, uh, but uh, what, what, what is your thoughts on after you see, you have seen Tua for a full season at Alabama and the way he could transition to the NFL? Well, I tell you, I like him because one thing, he's that ultra accurate. He throws lasers. Now, you know, I know he had a few stinkers here and there, but but they all do. And uh, but I mean, he was throwing lasers uh, most of the year, and uh, he could have racked up you know big big numbers too. Except he didn't play the whole game. And uh, uh, and you know that that's a tip of the hat to Coach Saban. I mean, he's letting the other guys play and get some reps instead of having somebody rack up all kinds of yards or. You know, just like giving uh, Harris the ball every time, say, on the goal line, you get it 30 touchdowns. Well, he doesn't do that. You know, he spreads it around. And uh, so, um, but I, I like Tua, and I think he's really going to be a good pro quarterback uh, because you've got to have some mobility these days to be a quarterback in the NFL. Um, I worry about those injuries, you know. I mean, he had, uh, obviously, uh, he ended up having the surgery and then been able to play in the national championship game and everything. And, uh, um, you know, I mean, yeah, he was kind of just, you know, nicked up a little bit during the year and that. But I really think that he's going to be a good pro quarterback. And like I said, I, I think that, uh, you know, looking through the first half of last season, you know, I, I really thought the following year there's going to be a lot of teams going to be fighting to get him as the top pick in the draft. And, and, um, you know, things change, uh, and, but I still think he's going to be a top 10 pick as long as he 
you know, just picks it up and, and plays like he can play, play within himself, uh, be his accurate self. I mean, he's, he's, he's thrown some balls that only like a Baker Mayfield could throw with those accurate, that type of accuracy in college. And uh, uh, many, many of his throws were like that. And he put them over the top and where nobody could get him but the receiver. Um, and one thing you got to keep in mind, too, now, he's got a pretty good line that's blocking for him. He has three NFL receivers or more. Four, you know, you put Irv Smith in there, and, and that, so you, you got some pretty good people around you throwing. But that's the other thing about Murray. Murray's got, you know, basically an NFL line. You got they were named the top offensive line in the country this year by the Joe Moore Group, and um, you know, uh, four of them are coming out in the draft, and one was a terrific freshman, the center, and uh, so he had pretty good protection, and uh, he had. You know, Brown, uh, one of the big-time receivers out there that for him most of the year that could catch and, and run and everything. So um, you got to take that in consideration when you're looking at that. And, of course, at Alabama, you're going to say, well, hey, there's three NFL receivers out there with Tua, uh, and you got a tight end that's going to be in the NFL, and, uh, you know, he's got really good blocking. So, you know, could Tua do that if he's at Ole Miss or, you know, or Mississippi State or somewhere else? You know, so – those things you take into consideration, but to me, the accuracy and his decision making, and, and for the most part, he, his decision making was really good. So I think it, it'd be a real interesting year this next year because again, he'll have another coordinator um, and uh, see how he picks up uh, things. I mean, basically the system would be the same, but uh, you know, you're going to have um, you know uh, different people coaching you and things like that. So in in, in, in your ear. But I think, I think, I mean, right now, I mean, I would say that Tua is going to be a top 10 guy next year as long as he picks it up from where he did this past year. Hey, Dan, speaking of Alabama players kind of making that transition to the NFL level, you know, we see a bunch of juniors going to the NFL draft. And, you know, of course, Quinnen Williams is getting all the attention, you know, with those top maybe three picks in the draft. But is there another Alabama player that you see on this roster that can make that easy transition to the NFL? Is the easy answer like Josh Jacobs or Irv Smith being, you know, a big play tight end? Or is it somebody like Mac Jones, maybe who's a hard hitting linebacker? Well, I tell you, uh, you're 0 for 4 on those guesses. I think it might be Jonah Williams, you know. And uh, I, I think, you know, Williams to me, though, is, is a Pro Bowl. Uh, offensive guard, you know, or a center, you know, not, but, you know, you can't, you know, people can't keep moving those guys from the outside in the guard and center. And Jonah's probably going to have to play out at tackle because technique wise and things, he's uh, head and shoulders above a lot of players. He's played basically, I mean, more of a pro offense than a lot of people. I know it's spread and a lot of things involved there, but I mean, um, the way he comes off the ball, playing in three-point stance. So, uh, you know, a lot of guys don't really play any in three-point stance. But, you know, um, he's played in that. And, and, you know, there's a lot of things. And he's really good with his hands. The, the only thing about Jonah that bothers me, to be honest with you, and I don't want to sound silly here, but I love offensive linemen with big, thick asses and legs, okay? And he doesn't have that. He, You know, he's more of a trim trimmer guy and uh you just like to have that big anchor in the back end you know power when you're moving people and uh so that's why i see jonah is you know either an all pro center or guard uh eventually but i think that he's going to be a guy he's going to start okay and then he's drafted he's going to start for somebody whoever drafts him he's going to be a plug and play guy and um, whether it's going to be guard or if they need a tackle, they'll stick him a tackle. But I think eventually he'll move inside to guard or center. Well, is it what about on the defensive side of the football? You know, outside of Quentin Williams, do you see someone kind of making that immediate impact, like a you know Deontay Thompson or you know a Mac Wilson? Yeah, I, yeah, I think Mac could. I think um, you know linebackers traditionally uh, are guys that can come in. And uh, make that make that uh, move, and uh, um, you know, a, a Christian Miller, if he's healthy, uh, be, and being a good pass rusher and things, being outside uh, teams, we could use him uh, out there. Mac Wilson, uh, you know, inside uh, a middle linebacker kind of guy that 
you know, here's the thing, guys, that, that – the base defense anymore in the NFL is a four-two-five. Okay, so you got to you got to be able to play the run. You got to be able to cover. And so, depending on how quickly those guys start, is how quickly people think they can cover those backs out of the backfield or tight ends or what have you. Because you know, defenses in the NFL they don't want to make substitutions all the time. So what they do is those guys on the field have got to be able to play the different defensive packages. So, you know, if people feel like Mac can play, uh, go in and, and, and cover and, and play the run when he has to, because, you know, any, in the NFL, first down is like third down anymore. You know, you got three wide outs out there and what, and the one back sets and what have you, and um, you got to be able to cover them. So, uh, but yeah, I think, you know, Mac, Mac uh, Wilson certainly could, um, again, I think, you know, Christian Miller does some really good things that, hey, if you had to go out in the slot and walk out the tight end or what have you, and then, then rush off the edge that way. Um, so, yeah, I think, you, and then Thompson, uh, again, um, you know, this is really a good year for safeties, and he's really a good free safety out there, and I think that, uh, you know, he'll be able to, um, you know, contribute to, whoever drafts him, uh, you know, and, and probably the first round. I don't think he'll get out of the first, but he could. You know, with all these defensive linemen out there and how, you know, people uh, go crazy for these quarterbacks. There'll be quarterbacks drafted in the first round that are not first-round quarterbacks, so that might kick him out of the first round. But but um, but anyway, I, I, all those guys are going to have a really good chance to play uh, as rookies. Yeah, they really will, and uh, we're going to spend the last few minutes here with Dan Shonka, OurLads.com, talking some NFL draft and a little bit of Alliance of American Football. Before we uh, ask you about the Alliance of American Football, the last guy I wanted to ask you about, uh, that there was a big, uh, a lot of tight ends that left early this year, Dan. I really liked Irv Smith, thought he was underrated as a blocker receiver, very dynamic. He put up better numbers than O.J. Howard did with the season, of course, played with a better quarterback. But what is your evaluation right now of Irv Smith? Did he make the right decision to come out? Well, I tell you what, I'm getting old because I did his dad, you know. <laughs> That's and right. Notre He's a first-round pick, yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, his dad was a terrific tight end, and uh, I really liked Notre Dame was in my area, that my scouting area, so I got to see him quite a bit. But, um, you know, and Irv's not quite as tall as his dad or anything. But, uh, yeah, I think that he's a guy that, uh, you know, you're – you know, the, the really the three top tight ends out there, two of them, ironically enough, were at Iowa, you know, mm-hmm. Hudson and then Fant, um, and both those guys are very athletic guys and things. got some range and speed, and, you know, and Irv Smith is, is right there with them. And uh, so, it, and Iowa emphasizes the blocking with their tight ends like uh, Coach Saban does. And, you know, Coach Saban used to coach with Coach Ferentz up at uh, – Cleveland with the Cleveland Browns and everything, so they they're very familiar with each other and how they do things, and so it's kind of ironic that the top three tight ends in this draft are all tied in together in, in a way. And uh, but I think Herb, uh, it, and it just again it depends on the team because um, you know I, I think that uh, some teams could take Herb ahead of uh, the two Iowa kids. You know, some other teams might have uh, Herb second or third, and the two Iowa kids ahead of them. So. Um, but, um, the tight end is a very important position in an, in an offense now. Uh, and whether you stick with the slot or, or what have you, and then the blocking is critical because, uh, you hate to have them hold them in to block, but if you do, a guy like Irv Smith could do that. Yeah, he really can. And Dan, uh, we had the first weekend of the Alliance of American football being backed, uh, staunchly by the NFL, a lot of NFL influence, some New rules, no kickoffs. That was interesting. Going for two every time. What were your impressions of the uh, first weekend of the Alliance and the level of play? Well, I'll tell you what. I, I absolutely loved it because uh, I really like the, uh, uh, you know, I, a lot of those guys, I, I know, you know, I've seen most of those guys on film when they're in college, you know, and uh, that's one thing that, you know, uh, for instance, like the center at, um, at Arizona, a lot of people don't even know who Jake Osorgi is, but he was a terrific four-year starter in college, and he was in the Shrine game, and he blocked everybody in the Shrine game. In fact, he blocked uh, three of the defensive linemen on the other side that got uh, drafted, including a Hall going to Oakland in the second round. 
and uh, he didn't get into camp till about the middle of camp. Started two games for Dallas uh, in the preseason and gets cut and doesn't even get put on a practice squad. Well, now mm-hmm. he's out there and he's getting a chance. And then last night, uh, you know, he did had a real nice pull from the center spot and kicked out a uh, run support uh, safety, and it it got him going. And, and the run, the running back, ended up getting 15, 20 yard run, cutting off his block. So, um, but guys like that, that. Um, you know, Perez up at Birmingham, for instance, Luis Perez, really like him uh, coming out of Texas Commerce. Um, everybody knows his story. Hey, his high school um, uh, football coach wanted to make him a receiver. So yeah. he said, the hell with you, I'm going to go be a bowler. You know, so he goes <laughs> and bowls and then, and, then, and then goes to junior college, and they're smart enough to play him a quarterback. And he's one of those kind of guys that when he gets up in the morning, he, he's accurate. You know, he and he made great decisions there at a Division two school at Texas Commerce. But nevertheless, you know, now he's getting he got a chance to, you know, it's only one game right now. But um, that's kind of how I remember him when he was at Commerce, you know, and then he was at the Rams uh, in the preseason. And um, they only kept a couple quarterbacks. And, and so he was not one of them. But, you know, guys like that getting their opportunity to play, you know, and I was the only scout that uh, – wrote Kurt Warner as a pro prospect, okay? And uh, oh, wow. we got plenty of evidence of that, and I don't need to go into it now. But, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we – uh, uh, and, and nobody believed me. I tried to get him – I was on the inside. I tried to get him to combine in the NFL. And my boss – I was with the combine at that time, and I couldn't even get him in, you know, throw into the backs and stuff to combine. So uh, now he's in the Hall of Fame. But that's why I really like this league because there's some really good offensive linemen. They're big and rangy. Uh, and, you know, and, and um, it, it's tough putting together a team really quickly. You know, Phil Savage, uh, who's got a lot of Alabama ties, did a tremendous job. Uh, I think he's probably got the best roster, uh, you know, in the league. Um, but uh, Phil did a tremendous job there at, uh, you know, at Arizona and uh, got some really good quarterbacks, their backs, their linebackers. I mean, uh, like, and he's got my center, Jake Asorgi. So I know Phil's doing a great job. So, Anyway, there's, you know, there's just, I think it's really going to be a good league. It's, it's a developmental league, and um, it's something NFL really needed because CAB, the CBA rules where, you know, you can't spend as much time with those guys as you can now. And uh, with being in this league, they, they can learn and get more reps and get better, and then they're ready to go on, you know, uh, hopefully, um, you know, on Sunday when an NFL team signs them. Yeah, and I know you're going to be uh... – uh, heavily involved with ourlads.com with this league. Yeah, we're going to be doing all the depth charts things, and when we uh, get our uh, uh, all the depth charts up there, we'll have links to our scouting reports, you know, on those guys, so uh, people can see that hey, this guy's you know just somebody off the street. This guy's a good football player, and he he didn't, uh, you know, he got cut by so and so. In fact, there was one guy I looked at last night that was hurt at Arizona. Uh, oh, Josh Allen, because there's only about five Josh Allens, you know, in the National <laughs> Football League. And this right. guy, you know, he was he got injured, and I went back to there, and I clicked on his, uh, you know, in our database, and, and he, he was with, uh, he's been with four, four NFL teams, and you know what, three or four times he was injured and got injury settlements. So, you know, then he got injured last night, so I don't know if Phil's got to pay him to get him out of there now or what. But anyway, <laughs> he, he, you can see, you know, what these, how, track these guys and see, you know, some guys don't have a record like he's got. They might just have a blank box there, and he got signed by so and so. You know, what have you? But, but now you'll know a little bit more about these guys. Um, you know, once we get that database set up. No doubt. Well, this has been a great conversation. We need to get you on also on my show in Huntsville, Dan. I mean, you get you do a great job, and uh, I've always wanted to speak with you. This has been a great conversation here in Tuscaloosa. I'm honored to be able to sit in for Ryan Fowler, but let everybody know how they can connect with you and your outstanding uh, service, my friend. Well, they can go to ourlads.com, and we've got uh, all the depth charts on there. Of course, we color code our college depth charts. Uh, uh, I'm looking at Alabama's right now, and uh, we've actually pulled all the draftable guys and seniors to the right and filled in, you know, with the other guys and everything right now. But uh, um, those will be updated after spring ball and, and what have you. But we got, you know, all the seniors up there. So we got, you know, the college depth, the FBS um, college depth charts up there. Plus, we got all the NFL depth charts up there. With the colored uh, the guys are coded in red if they're in free agency this year if they're un- unrestricted 
free agents that are on all the NFL depth charts. So, but uh, we got a lot of things in our ratings, uh, you know, early ratings for uh, uh, some of the guys. Uh, well, you know, for the NFL draft, and that those will be updated as things go and and things, and we get more uh, combine information because hey, if you don't have verified information, it really, uh, you know, some of these mock drafts are fun to do and all that right now, but. Until you get verified information, a lot of it doesn't mean anything because you might fall in love with a guy that's a really good football player, but what if he's, you know, 5'2 and 135 <laughs> pounds, you know what I mean? Right. So, uh, but anyway, uh, great have, have, uh, being with you guys on the show today. 